Let's show them what you got. It is illogical, Captain, not to enjoy Star Trek Strange New Worlds. <laughs> All right, people. Ant Gold here on behalf of JVS, and it's my honor to review Season 1, Episode 5 of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. And I gotta tell you, I'm here for it. I'm also rocking the gold uniform. I, it's a little test model template. I, I don't think gold's actually my color. I, I think maybe I need to try something else. What do you think? Blue, red next? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Or maybe just when I get the real one, it'll be a little, little tighter. Maybe one of the variant versions that pulled out because they pull out a variant of the uniform in this episode. I, I see people, Easter egg people, check that out. Um, and I think it's done very well. Episode 5. Episode 5 deals with a familiar topic, but but with, again, an interesting think-outside-the-box type mentality that I think great Trek shows need to have, and they do it well. I think also in this show, this episode was fun. We got character development. We had character interactions that felt organic and 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 not cringy type of dialogue. And I don't mean cringy about it. Just like it felt organic. It didn't feel like I'm saying this and you're saying this, and now we we agree we have this emotion. No, we get to learn about the characters by seeing them interact and doing things. That's good writing for me. I like that type of question. And this episode was just fun. It was just fun. <laughs> And, you know, say what you want about the J.J. Abram movies, uh, the first one and the last, uh, and all of them really, they had elements of fun in there that I think sometimes people forget is part of Star Trek. Um, they got, we got, we got some uh, parameters on technology. We have some, a very, very scary uh, impl implication of technology in this one that I think some of the, uh, some of you older Trek fans will, will know this debate and it, <laughs> we will we will see um but yeah all all for it and some classic callbacks even the d space nine was in this one but the show wasn't riddled with them it wasn't like oh look i know i i know that thing or i get that reference um it was more like this builds upon lore that was already there and speaking of which it builds upon some character's backstory it did have me worried a little bit, but 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 as it went on, this felt like an ag uh, organic exploration of this plot thread. And for us people that know Star Trek from 20 years ago or 40 years ago, this is is going to be curious to be like, oh, well, this we already see where D is of this. Hmm, I wonder. Uh, for new fans coming in and just watching this, not knowing it, they're they're going to be invested, and I think this is going to be a, a good ride for them. Uh, o overall, guys, I'm just here for it, and I think that no matter what, it doesn't matter if you think it. You've thought if you think Star Trek is too woke, and, and let me preface this: I think Star Trek's always been progressive. I think it's just done a better job of weaving in progressive messages into its into greater stories and better writing. Um, while leaving room for debate and, or just leaving the question up here for the, re the, 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 um, the viewers to decide readers too, I guess, if you, if you read the novels or things like that, uh, but it does have that in there too. So this is where we want to, this is where a lot of us want to track from. You're going to have detractors. You're going to be somebody in the stuff that's like, oh, there are other same sex people. You can have other people going like, oh, there's not enough same sex people. Oh, or same sex relationships. You're going to have those people on there. Push them to the outliers. I'm, I can't wait for great Trek discussions, debates, and happy to talk about a series that majority of us are going to love. I don't think I've had this much fun with the series. Well, no, I've had fun with your Lower Decks. But I will say this. I haven't had this much fun with a, a live-action Star Trek series in like 20 years. So I am, I am for it, people. I hope you are, too. Can't wait to take this ride with y'all, see what you guys think, and, and, and just have some good debates. And again... This show has issues. All Trek shows have issues. And, and you know what? When I do my season long review, I'm going to end it with us talking about the strengths and challenges of every Star Trek series. Maybe not the anime ones. Ah, you, you twist my arm enough, maybe the anime series. But we're going to get into those conversations because I think we can. And you can, you can have some problems with some episodes. You have some problems with some choices. That doesn't make you a hater. You can love everything and it can still, that doesn't mean you're not a, a true fan. 
we're here for. We're here to have the, the 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 discussions that Star Trek hope we could have and how we could have them as evolved humans. We're here now. We can be here if you will join us. So I'm here for it. I hope you're here for it. Can't wait to take this ride for you with you. And I'll see you out there. Hello, YouTube explorers. Those who seek knowledge, enlightenment, adventure, romance, and fantasy. My name is Ant Gold. I'm here representing JVS, and I have the pleasure of talking to you about Strange New Worlds, uh, Lift, uh, Lift Us Up From Suffering, Episode uh, 6. <laughs> um, so I haven't talked to y'all since Episode 5. I uh, hope you guys checked it out. I know I got a little early preview, and I'm getting a little early preview for uh, these next few episodes. So um, but I hope you came on this journey with me. Won't go too much into spoilers or anything like that. Just give my overall thoughts on this. This is my second favorite of the Strange New Worlds episodes so far. Uh, I think uh, episode probably four, then this, then five. Um, but again, we're getting back to some really great quandaries and morality tales of uh star trek of yesteryear where there's really sometimes no clean cut clean cut answer and the good guys don't also always necessarily win um well not a 100 percent victory if that makes sense so sometimes the bear gets you sometimes you get the bear type of thing uh yeah, so we have some great interpersonal reactions going on. Um, again, I'm really liking that Ahura is our point of view character because through her, we get the um, access to not only different personalities on the ship, but what their roles and function are, what their philosophy is leading into how they function on the ship, which I think is really cool. She, Ahura is our point of view character. She's our Harry Potter, if you will. And not only that, but she's also useful. So her talents are being put to way better use than we've seen in previous incarnations already. And uh, it's been a very, I think the best, I think, I think before this, the best use was the J.J. Abrams movies because actually <laughs> someone who, who's naturally gifted at languages when you're exploring, um, utilizing that gift is a lot, um, a lot more interesting than just saying oh this alien naturally can know languages or or oh we have this magic computer that translates stuff it's that's still a cool technology but still give the translators so, so give the person natural linguistics uh something to do uh and if you look at non-intelligence theory there's plenty of other things in that that should just should fit into a wheelhouse um so i like that in this episode we get to see some of that um Again, the personalities on this ship are melding very well. And you don't have to like everybody. Everybody's going to be your favorite. Um, you might like some pairings more than others, but I'm, I'm liking where this is going. Um, we also get to see an alien. You know what? Pause right here. If you, if you, if you want to watch the episode before I go into anything more, I highly recommend it. I like the episode. But at this point, we're going to go three, two, one, some spoiler talk. The use of technology is great in here. We get some um, innovations. One thing I love about Star Trek is that they were able to come up with innovations for our current world problems. Something that Enterprise attempted to do, and sometimes it really well, sometimes struggled it, was showing how we got to a certain era in Star Trek. So this one, we get to see medical advancements of wiping out diseases. And, and possibly how the Federation um, gets to use that technology later on to wipe out diseases. So I thought that was cool. We get some new characters um, and some of the threads that were started, some of the paths that were started, we get a continuation of them, like Mbengue's daughter. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right, but the doctor's daughter. Um, we, get a, uh, we get some more character development with her. Ensign Ma, Captain Pike, because I think I'm messing people's names up right now. Sorry, guys. Um, Captain Pike. He is the driving personality of this show. Um, and he's still wrestling with something that we would all wrestle with, knowing exactly not even how we're going to die, um, when we are going to drastically decrease in our physical capabilities. And it'd be like knowing that your body is going to be a prison. Like if you knew 10 years from now, your body is, what do you do? What do you do? Especially when presented with the temptation of how you can fix it. 
link into what I'm talking about with the medical procedures before. I thought that was great, and he acted, and he acted in a way that um, he's he's reacting to this. I think this is giving him more distinction as a captain, and he, even though he reacts differently than Picard or Cisco, he still reacts. Um, really lovable uh, character, and you feel for his plight because you know one, I'm 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 I'm, I'm split. I don't want him to avoid his fate. But is there a tricky way around it? Is there something he can do not to? Is it something that you accept that even though we are all headed to a certain, <laughs> to a grave at some point, um, do we still live our lives, right? I think I think that's really interesting. Um, the other point is we get to see a new alien planet. Uh, for some of y'all watching Star Wars, you're, you, you have to, you've seen the same color palette and the same desert dunes a bunch of times. For original, uh, for Next Generation and DS9 and Voyager, we might have seen that same village and that same well from different angles multiple times. So seeing a new alien civilization and using some of this budget they have to give us new worlds and new cultures were great. Uh, some question about the weapons they use, but uh, the efficiency of those weapons, but still great. And then the ending. Um, the show does a really good job of building up characters, introducing us that we care about, and then um, having them meet their, their certain fates. Not all by death, but you care about what's going on. Um, I will say that I don't know if some of the writers from here are from Discovery, but somebody plays Warhammer. Because the emperor from <laughs> they took the emperor, uh, the emperor of mankind's like motif and everything like that, um, color scheme and 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 cadence and that other one, and in this one, I am sure this is this is based on the Golden Throne. So <laughs> I was halfway expecting this 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 one this this chair they have to be like holding back demons. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, this all makes sense what you guys watch the episode. And I'm still trying not to spoil too much. So you guys, if you if you watch this and you want to know like exactly what I think word for word for the um the episode, let me know. I'll do that. But uh if you just want a flavor of it, this is what we want Star Trek uh, Star Trek to be. Um morality issues, technology, technological advancement, um science, um feelings, human emotions. Um yeah, man. I like I said before, every track is tracked so far, right? Even Picard season two. But there is there is a distinct improvement in the writing of this show versus what we've gotten mostly in the last five years or so. Um, I hope they keep it up. All right, look, guys, um, I know I promised top 10. I've been going through some mental, some um, health, not mental health, but I've been going through some health issues. I'm so used to saying mental health. Um, as soon as that's dealt with, I'll have a lot more time to sit down there and get this top 10 out. And I'm looking forward. I hope y'all got joined in the discussion. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for gracing me with your attention. Uh, uh, and I hope to continue this journey with you. All right. Well, see you out there. Why don't angels need a starship? <laughs> All right. Hello, Internet people. Ant Gold here. Uh, it's my pleasure on behalf of JVS to review episode seven of season one of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. And did you check out that intro teaser and then that, 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 that opening? I think Paramount's saying what we're seeing here, people, that this is a show you need to be watching and paying attention to. This might be their flag, their flagship series so far. Um, all right. So there is no way I could talk about this without spoilers. So I'm going to cut this in half. First part is going to tell you how I feel about it. Second part is going to be the spoiler talk. We're not going to tell Sam. He, he might not notice. Um, so, I'm going to recount down before I start about spoilers, but first I'm just going to talk to you about how I felt. Like the episode, wasn't terrible, wasn't anything out. It's probably my least favorite episode of the series, though, because it is pretty much a hub to set up other plots. And what I mean by that is that everything in this episode is to set up either future things for the season or future things for other, other way down the other, uh, other seasons. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
but <laughs> but it was kind of clear because there's there's three different storylines in A, B, C, and uh, one of those storylines they didn't even finish on screen. They kind of finished off screen, <laughs> or they they resolved off screen and cut back. So it was like, wow, wow, we, we know what you're doing. Hey, hey, I get it. You gotta pinch them pennies. You know, this Discovery Picard took all that budget. It, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, so, so yeah, I think there was great acting, great interpersonal connections, great setup, because I am interested in the setup. Don't get me wrong. But, but this, this whole episode is pretty much a be continued <laughs> without saying it's a be continued. So, so if the payoffs come later, we might look back at this and be like, oh, and I, I think part of that part of that payoff would have been great if they didn't reveal something at the at the end but they did we're good i recommend the episode you guys know that on this journey strange new world has probably been uh the star trek is quenching my star trek thirst a lot um i've gotten some kickback on saying that this is this is probably going to be the flagship star trek series now uh discovery fans i'm glad you love discovery uh, I'm getting some hate for saying that. I, I don't mean disrespect. I just think Strange New Worlds is, is is catching on in the way that Discovery wasn't, and I, I, and that's all it is. Um, but hey, you, you'll have them both. I think Discovery's coming back for another season, so we'll have them both and Lower Decks, which I really love, and Prodigy, which I really haven't checked out besides one episode, uh, and Picard, which eh. anyway. Recommend this episode. Please check it out. Comment down below. And so now we're going to get into spoilers. Five, four, three, two, one. They name dropped. They name dropped Cybok, and you saw the back of his head. They are bringing in Spock's half brother from Final Frontier. And to my knowledge, he hasn't been, <laughs> he wasn't mentioned before that or since from Star Trek V. Uh, so this is a very interesting thing to, 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 to delve into Spock's lore. We know that Cybok has access to different abilities than other Vulcans. Um, and are they going to play around with that? That's really cool. Anyway, let me back. Uh, this, this, this whole plot starts off kind of like uh, Star Trek Beyond. The... The Enterprise picks up this therapist, ex-Starfleet ex therapist who's doing relief aid on the borders of Starfleet territory where there is prone to pirate attacks. Um, she feeds them some information about the pirates and everything like that. And so the Enterprise goes off to go help some uh, colonists that were, were attacked. Get there, there's a trap, they get out of it. They find one of the colony ships with life signs. Somebody says it's a trap. They go, ah, we still gotta check it out. Captain Pike, number one, and the head of security, Sun Chi, they all, and some others, they beam aboard the, the colony ship. At the same time, pirates beam aboard the Enterprise. And this is a trope in Star Trek where it is really easy. They say it's hard, but it's really easy to take over a starship for a day <laughs> or a space station uh, for a while. Well, I guess I'm going to say that was easy. But this is it, Starfleet facilities. Uh, it's, come on, I love your security. I, I love you, Malcolm. I love you, Worf. But, but geez, geez, come on, guys. Uh, but they do do some things that's a little different. So we've seen it before where where they lock out. Oh, I lost, I lost my lens flares. It's okay. Uh, where they lock out the, the bridge so the pirates can't go anywhere and do any major damage. Uh, they take over the bridge and the only people to get escape is Spock and the X-Federation therapist. And we, I mean, and I know something I was watching, I was like, why, is, why are they using sun sittings in a, in a universe where vaporization is really easy disintegration? Uh, and we get to see Spock throw some hands every once in a while. You remember this science nerd got, got hands. He's neck pitching, ragdolling people. <laughs> And so him and the, him and the their ex their angel ex Starfleet ex Starfleet therapist Angel get away. Um, she's not an angel; her name is Angel. Hence my reference at the beginning of this. It might be kind of spoilery, but I think people aren't going to really get it unless they watch the episode. So on the other side of the ship, uh, the Nurse Chapel also gets away. So she hyper sprays and stuff, but she didn't, it wasn't like she was, she was ragged on people. She had to actually 
use speed, agility, and hypo spray to get away from her captors, take down some people. Um, so all that happens, they get to the bridge. I mean, they get to the engineering, they lock the doors, they start uh, accessing the computer to transfer things. They even say they're going to beam the captain and them back on board, maybe beam the pirates off. That's what I was thinking the whole time. Once you get access to the ship, you're good. Uh, but for some reason, controls go back to the bridge. And what is it? It's because Angel, and we should have known because she had a randomly sexy outfit for no reason. <laughs> she had a sexy bad guy. She switched to a sexy bad guy outfit for no reason, is actually the captain of the pirates. Um, now, during this time, Pike's on the the uh, the the ship with the other pirates, and he convinces them to let him cook for him, and then starts in fighting between them. So immediately starts. This this is the thing that didn't they didn't really care about that story because they didn't even bother to finish that story. We can, we cut back the exposition about what happened. So, but uh, Angel brings Nurse Chapel and Spock to the bridge. And Spock's like, well, you got the access code. And she's like, I'm enjoying the ship. Like, boom, shooting lasers and phasers and stuff. And Spock's like, well, why you keep yours loud? And Nurse Chapel's like, well, Spock, shh. I mean, I forgot. <laughs> it's, you know. And she's like, oh, well, this ship is nice, Spock, but I wasn't here for the Enterprise. I'm here for you. Like, man, dating apps must go out of out of style in the future. <laughs> Vulcans are hard to find on there, maybe. No. Um, so we find out that she wants to do a prisoner exchange because her lover... Uh, what she previously set up was killed by pirates, was actually taken by Vulcans, was a Vulcan. And who runs the Vulcan, uh, quote-unquote, prison? It's not a prison. Reformatory or whatever. Uh, to Paul. To Pai? To Pang. Uh, Spock's fiance. And so she sets up an exchange, which would either disgrace her because she let a prisoner go, who could be really dangerous to the universe, or disgrace her because she let her, who she, somebody she's responsible for, her fiance, be killed. What is what is what is a Vulcan to do? Um, so this episode set up a really good villain in Angel. She is pretty charismatic, talkative, energetic. Um, she is doing wordplay with Spock and Nurse Chapel. It's it's great. And even the plan made a lot of sense. Uh, one hitch, though, is that <laughs> Spock will throw away the relationship real quick. So she shows up and Spock breaks up with her and kisses Nurse Chapel. And there was a lot of passion in that kiss. As anybody knows, in historical Star Trek OTS, there was uh, some tension between Spock and Nurse Chapel. And on this show, they made sure those two actors had chemistry. Uh, so Tepang, she, she ends their relationship and no longer will trade, uh, which gives an opening for um, the captain, that doesn't really make sense, to help them take over the ship by firing on the Enterprise. Um, I'm not sure where the Enterprise shields weren't up. Maybe they were down for the transport. I'm not sure. But anyway, fast forward, we find out that she escapes, Angel escapes. And we find out her whole motivation is love. And she talks about, she looks, you can see that Nurse Chapel has had some really hard times with relationships. And we've seen that she's kind of, she's kind of, uh, uh, closed off. But she escapes. The little tagline we get at the end is that we know who he's talking about, which is Spock's brother, Cybok. And Cybok has some very interesting powers, um, abilities that other vocals don't have that we know from Star Trek V. Uh, we wondered where Cybok was during the whole introduction to Michael Burnham as his stepsister. Where was where did that go? Where was Cybok during all this time? So we might get some answers to that. Um, we might get some flashbacks. So we get a little teaser with his head turn. You see a little bit of his beard. And so Cybok's showing up. So what I mean is, is that they started a lot of these uh plot threads going forward a reoccurring villain that was interesting an upcoming villain that we've seen in, in movies at a different time in their lives uh and how they're going to interact with it so yeah i'm here for it we can see what happens after this see what's going on and um i'm looking forward to these storylines being paid off anyway people this is ant gold on behalf of jvs thank you so much for joining me I'm trying to cut down on my ums, but it's how I it's how I think it transitions. So, but I get it. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be as smooth as Steve or Jesse Gender one day. That's my that's my ultimate goal. Um, we'll be getting new some equipment in here. And don't I know, I know, I know, I've heard some of y'all, we still are gonna do that top 10. 
do not worry. I'm getting some surgery soon, so I will just be laid up and all I could do is talk to y'all. So look forward to seeing you out there. Peace. Filing out the top of